listening to The Mitten on Mitten. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to episode 15. There are 85 days to Rhinebeck. Let's see what I've been up to. In Loose Threads this week, um, I spent a lot of time working on the crochet pattern uh, translation for the Corkle crochet or knit along um, for Ken's uh, manly lace mitts. Um, and I did I did get it done. I think they came out pretty nicely. Uh, Ken commented he seems pleased with them. Uh, so the crochet pattern is now available and I put a picture up on the Ravelry group. Um, so hopefully uh, those of you who crochet and want to take a stab at it um, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, I found them pretty comfortable and squishy, and uh, I thought the the open lace ribbed pattern looked pretty nice. Um, so that's all set there and uh, good to go. Um, and other loose threads, I've been starting to look at the vendors for Rhinebeck, and uh, what I want to do is... Uh, really just narrow down my list of the must-sees and want-to-sees. The must-sees are, those are the folks that they really don't sell online a lot. Um, They they just go to the fiber festivals, whereas the really um, just want-to-sees, those are people who have online shops, but I want to take a look at their product. I'll probably go back later on during the year and purchase from them. Um, but I usually don't purchase from them at the festival. So, um, that's what's up in Loose Threads. What's fit in the mitten this week? Just the socks. Um, if you go outside, you melt. It's been so hot and humid, um, which is really typical for New York, and I'm not complaining, and we've been getting the afternoon thunderstorms to uh, offset the heat, which the gardens are loving. My gardens are in full bloom. I mean, they're really beautiful. Uh, You just can't go out there and look at anything, because if you do, you'll melt. So the only knitwear I've been wearing has been the socks, uh, especially the lightweight ones. And, of course, I have my freshly cleaned uh, Jared Flood Gainsey that I've been using as a pillow on the way to work, um, which has been really nice. So that's really all the knitting I've been wearing. Uh, I tried on the the mitts um, for the corkle, and uh, they fit really nice, and I took them off in less than 10 seconds because my hands would have actually exploded into flames because it was so hot. Did I mention that it's hot? So if you hear extra noise this episode, extra air noise, it's from the fan. And no, I'm not turning it off. It's going to stay on. So I'll just apologize for that right up front and uh, try and remain cool (laughs) while I do the recording. What have I been knitting this week? Um, This week I've been knitting, of course, the Rhinebeck uh, 2016 sweater, um, third attempt. So far, knock on wood, it's going all right, but uh, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. I still think it looks a little too big. Um, We'll see. (laughs) I'll wait till I start knitting the sleeves like I did for the last one, and like I keep telling, uh, my Mr. Mitten, it's quite all right if I end up going to uh, the store and buying a sweater to wear, or even just wearing one from last year. I'll be fine with it. No, I won't. Who am I trying to kid? I want to wear the sweater for this year. Uh, I want my cahoots. I want it to look nice. Um, so I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep going at it. I'm gonna keep trying to make it work. Uh, and. Uh, You know, hopefully it will. So there you have it. There it is. Um, So I was knitting that. and Oh, and I was knitting, of course, 
the knit along, the corkle, uh, the manly lace mitts uh, by Ken, a uh, homestead hobbyist himself, and those, uh, they're looking pretty nice. I'm on the, the first of the knit mitts, and I plan to gift them to my little sister. I'll give the crochet one to my big sister, and they'll both actually get a a real honest-to-goodness Christmas present for me this year, instead of just a Facebook card, or a card, or cookies. Yeah, that's usually all I, I give them, but this time I'll, I'll have something that's uh, a little bit more personalized, and I hope they like it. Um, so that's what I've been knitting. What have I been spinning? Well, I got a little bit more spinning done on the Hipstrings Buoy Beacon. Uh, not as much as I did at the spin along, um, but a little bit more. Um, so, I mean, if you look at it, there's still uh, the braid looks as if it really hasn't been touched. But I put in a good, oh, I'd say at least an hour, hour and 15. It's just, I mean, I've been being slow about it, and, and it's been hot, and no need to rush, and it's not a Rhinebeck project, so I've just been using it to hone my spinning skills, uh, which can use a lot of honing. Um, but I've been thinking about the brown merino, um, which I could spin up and enter as a project, but I kind of want to finish the sweater first. And this hip strings braid is almost done, so if I get that done, it, it can, uh, it'll be done and and that'll be nice because I like having once I open up a bat or a braid I like spinning it through to completion mostly because um, it keeps a consistency in the uh, in the spin which I think is necessary at this point in my spinning career I can't just uh, pick something up and try and match uh, the weight of it it's just not going to work um, so but it, it looks kind of nice um, you know, I really like the colorway, and uh, so we'll just keep plugging away at it. What's finished this week? Well, the crocheted mitts are finished. They're all uh, all set to go, be wrapped up and uh, put in a gift bag and mailed off uh, to my sister. So maybe a little bit early for that. On the other hand, I was thinking, because I made them out of um, Superwash Merino and Shetland, that since they've got Merino in there, I could use them as an entry at Rhinebeck. I'd put in both the crochet version and the knit version and and see how they did. Um, so I was, I was just toying with the idea, you know, it never hurts to have a extra competition piece lying around. Um, so I'm going to mull that over, but that's a possibility. Um, so anyway, that's what's done. The, uh, the cro crocheted, um, manly lace mitts. Alrighty. And now a word not from a sponsor. Hip strings brings together modern support spindles, fiber, and the spinners who love them. With custom blends inspired by the coast of Maine to their cocktail hour collection inspired by, well, being parents, working, life in general, Hip Strings offers rich, saturated colors and fiber blends to quench your spinner's thirst. Stop by and visit them at hipstrings.com for the perfect summertime porch spinning companion. In Stash Up Down this week, I'm still in Stash Shock from last week's uh, abundance of riches. Um, about the only thing I even thought about actually going out and purchasing was a, a longer set of uh, circular needles and uh, decided to go ahead and use double pins instead. Um, double pointed. I don't know why I always call them double pins. Probably because I always abbreviate them DPNS, which, you know, you could shortened to double pins, but it's double pointed needles. Um, so I have a short size 8 needle and uh, I wanted to use the size 8 which is 5 millimeter for the knit 
knitted mittens um, to match the 5 millimeter crochet hook that I made the crochet mittens out of so I could really show the difference between um, the two different fabrics that are made even though the millimeter size is the same. Um, so I only had a, a short pair of the 8's, US 8's, and I was thinking about going to my local yarn store down in the city and picking up a longer pair, but then I realized that I would have to go outside and leave air conditioning in order to do that. So, yeah, that didn't happen. <laughs> that so didn't happen. It's been so hot. Did I mention that it's hot? Because, I mean, it's hot up, up here upstate. It's even more humid down in the city with the river right there. Oh, it's really hot. So I didn't go shopping, and so no stash up down. Where I want to be this week, um, I want to be in front of an air conditioner with a fan, eating ice cubes, and uh, that's where I want to be. <laughs> that's pretty much where I have been, just uh, staying in one air-conditioned place and the, and the next. Um, the thought of going to a farm or an outdoor festival or even a convention. It's just too much for my my heat-addled brain to even deal with. And the thing is, it's really, it's not a heat wave or anything. It's not like in the hundreds or anything. It's this humidity that's just like got every single bone in my body aching and me just wanting to just just lie and still and be cool. Um, so that's where I want to be. That's pretty much where I have been. And uh, other than trying to move the, the, the pups out of the way of the fan so some of it actually gets to me, I've been fairly successful in my efforts at remaining cool. And um, just really thankful that I work in a very air-conditioned building. Um, so that's where I want to be, in air conditioning. In Grabby Paws this week, although I, you know, I, I kind of shopped out, um, because as I said a moment ago, uh, this, this has been in, in the embarrassment of riches that I uh, procured there. Um, I did find myself... Just uh, taking a look at, uh, I think it was Acker Works, the uh, Lazy uh, Kate, the flat Lazy Kate, the one that is ever so portable and cute and adorable and it's just like got its own little case and it looks so pretty and nice. <sighs> and I was thinking because my spinning wheel my wonky louette has a lazy kate on it and so of course i was saying to myself well there's absolutely no reason that i need a lazy a lazy kate um but then i realized <clears throat> cuz you know justification is is our friend that my lazy kate on the wonky louette is not tensioned and the um Ackerworks one is so there's my justification um, for getting the Ackerworks Lazy Kate. No, I'm not going to get it. This is this is a true grabby grabby paws stuff I want, but I'm not going to get. Um, I really just I don't I don't spin that high of a quantity in my mind to uh, to justify having that and. Uh, so there you have it. There it is. But it's a pretty, pretty lazy cake. It really is. Okay. In dough this week, um, I'm really happy to tell you about this particular dough. Um, because fortunately, I'll tell you right at the onset, no knitting was harmed. Although I almost had a heart attack. On Sunday when I went to go do the NPR show, what I do is I, I get up, you know, I have some 
fruit and coffee for breakfast. And then I fill up my to-go coffee cup and head out out the door. And sometimes I stop and get myself a really nice piece of pastry from the bakery. Um, but don't tell Mr. Mitten. Uh, so I have my my coffee cup and and I, you know, drive over to Connecticut and go to the station there and I do the show with the guys and drink my coffee and rinse my coffee cup out. Well, usually I don't rinse my coffee cup out, but this Sunday, for no particular reason, I rinsed my coffee cup out. Oh, I know why it was. It was because it was so hot out, I was afraid if I left it in my bag or forgot it in the car, it would have that sour milk smell in it, which I really hate. Um, so I rinsed it out to make sure there was no leftover milk in the cup. And as I was walking out of the station, I tossed my rinsed out to-go cup right in my bag with my knitting. So I get out to the car and I get out to the truck, I open up the door, I toss in my knitting bag that has the coffee cup in it, and I see this like wet stain all over the side of my knitting bag. I freaked out because for a brief moment, I forgot that I had rinsed out my coffee cup and that the only thing I was looking at was just a little bit of water that got the canvas of the bag wet, but everything inside was absolutely fine and that's all it was. Just a little water and everything turned out really well. So, oh, I gave myself a start, but it worked out well in the end. Where I'll be this week, um, town board meetings. That that seems to be the the fun fun thing to do this this week. Uh, I'll be at town board meetings, um, just regular meetings, but but still, you know, you would think that they they, they used to, you know, before I got on the board. They used to take the month of July and August off and have no town board meetings. Um, but this this latest uh, group of folks seems to like to hear themselves talk. Um, I'm part of the group. I must want to hear myself talk too because I haven't been able to talk them out of it. Um, so where I'll be is town board meetings and, and home and work. And you know what? That's that's fine. That's just fine. A nice, quiet, peaceful week. I could do with that. Yeah, I keep saying that, you know, pretty much every week that I want a quiet and peaceful week, and then it doesn't turn out that way. I end up running all over the place. Um, tonight I had to drive to the town north of us um, just just to pick up something on the way home. But of course it meant that I didn't get home for two hours till after my train got in, so everything was late. But anywho, um, so that's what happens. I plan for these nice, quiet, and calm times, and then, boom, something comes up. But uh, maybe this time it'll stay nice, quiet, and calm. That'd be great. I'd like that. In questions this week, we have a question from Kath, and it's in like 16 parts. No, I'm kidding. It's not. It's only like a three or four part question. But the thing is, it's on the other part of this phone. So what I have to do is see if I can get this to record at the same time that um, at the same time that I'm scrolling through trying to find her question because it was a really good question it was about uh, the needles and um, here it is Kath wants to know what causes my last two or three stitches to get hung up on my otherwise smooth as silk needle joints and how should I prevent this from happening and is it okay to mutter under my breath when it does happen and are there any muttering that I should avoid using considering my sparkly royal status? 
Um, good question, and thank you for sending it, Kath. The reason that your last two or three stitches get hung up on your smoothest silk um, needle joints is because the last two or three stitches and the first two or three stitches um, are the have the highest amount of tension because you're trying not to ladder when you're knitting on your circulars. Uh, so there, you have a choice. You can uh, contend with the two or three stitches being difficult to move over and you have to pay attention to them or you can have a little bit of ladder uh, which you work out um, after it's knit up. Uh, I sense that you prefer not to have that much laddering uh, going on. So if you wanted to try to prevent that, you could use now it depends on the type of fiber that you're working with but you could use something like the um, dental wax and just put a little in the join because it's not going to harm the metal of the needle nor will it harm the cable and that that could fill in that little gap um, and make it smoother for the fiber to go over. Of course you're going to have a little bit of wax residue on on that fiber which will after you know a while wash out. Um, the other thing you could do is you could um, heat up a, a cup of hot water in the microwave or you know pour yourself a cup of hot water like you as if you were making tea and then just dip your needles into it, the cable of the needle into it for a moment or two. Um, pull the needles out. Be real careful because the needles themselves are going to conduct that heat really quickly. So, you know, you might want to consider using a hot pad or something. And then just um, run your fingers back and forth across that join. If the hitch is coming from the cable as opposed to the needle, or as opposed to the join, that should smooth that out and prevent that from happening. Um, overall, prevent it from happening. Really, um, it is the nature of the beast. Uh, <clears throat> unless you use a, a solid straight cable wherever there's a join, if there's a join, there's there's a piece of fiber that's going to find its way into it. Um, especially the finer, the finer the fiber, the smaller the crack that it will find to get stuck in. Um, that's just how it goes. Is it okay to mutter under your breath when it does happen? Absolutely. You can absolutely mutter under your breath. Um, you can say things like, uh, oh, peppercorns, or gosh and by golly, you know, things like that. Um, I would avoid using anything stronger uh, because of your sparkly royal status. You do have a, a reputation to uphold, and uh, it's kind of important. You know, a lot of folks look up to you, and and so that's why I would recommend uh, the peppercorns comment. So I hope this is really helpful, and uh, thanks again for your question. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye.